All right, guys, it's windy as shit again today. Um, got a new starter for the RD. Starter's done on it. Um, ordered it, and luckily it got here right as it went out. But we're missing the bolt up here to the top to the starter. And then your other bolt's down there on the bottom. There's really ain't no how to, though, so. But it's down there on the bottom. It's kind of a pain to show you where it's at. I don't have the AC on mine, so my starter is pretty easy to get to. Uh, down there is the bottom bolt. All that oil is coming from the back of that transmission. I got to get that seal for it. Once we get the seal for it, we'll be good. But we got to take the starter off. It's done. Put an actual starter on this bitch. And also it looks like we're missing... Yeah, we're missing a bolt. To the transmission as well, right above the starter. Missing a bolt there too. I'm going to have to get that bolt off the parts car. Right underneath that starter bolt, there's another hole right above that axle. There's supposed to be a bolt in there. Whoever did the clutch job on this car before I ever got it didn't learn how to put stuff back. Dumbass people. Let me get this damn thing out. Oh, and I also have highly suspicion that this little bastard here, which... Usually 97 and below, an OBD2 will not come up as this EVAP, I can't think, pressure switch or sensor or something. But I think this could be my problem, and it could be the fuel filter as well with the long trim issue. But I'm thinking it's this right here, because when we get gas we have issues too, so thinking it's that but if I dump gas into the car just out of a can it's fine to get it's good so I think I'm gonna replace that today too I got a new one I got two of them actually so I'm gonna replace the one in the auto car then all right guys you want to take this 10 millimeter out unplug this and then get your clip out from back there and then you just take that hose there, off there, there, wherever you want. And then the one, oh, as you can see it, then the one right there, take that off and then you replace this. And then if you notice, there's a line that tells you what direction this goes. So let me go get the new one and I'll be right back. All right, guys, here they are. OEM purge control valve, these EVAPs. Of course, from Four Green, that's where I always get everything. So you get your OEM parts. You don't have to worry about getting junk. But hopefully, this might be some of the problem. There's a vent on these things too. See, these are all up on this one. It's up over here hard to show you guys you see where all the lines run the fuel lines run down in to the evap canister down in there and there's a vent too but I'm thinking this purge valve is stuck open or closed and causing it to do a misfire when you fill it up and then also possibly doing the long term trim fuel code but that still could be this fuel filter if we can get this off we got this running now but this don't want to accept gas either come problem on these on bays um see this canister right here we got to take this canister off and we should try to do that today looks like we're losing the, lost the clip on this one because this was probably off before um we need to take this off and shake this thing out. Um, I'm concerned I'm not bound to get it off the bumper. But yeah, we gotta do this. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it today or not. Um, crappy weather coming tomorrow. I probably shouldn't 
but we just wait. This has got to be done because it's throwing all that crap into the gas tank. Do all the little charcoal filtering. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get that damn thing out of here. With it being tucked so you guys can see up underneath with the bumper. And I don't want to take this whole bumper off. Ugh. So, I don't know. We got to get to it though. Usually a lot of times this line right here, you can take it off and just blow it out, but I didn't have an issue with it. It wasn't clogged. Um, yeah, yeah, we got the starter on. I didn't even show you that, I don't think. Starter's on with bolt, both bolts now. I don't know if I can get you guys even in there. You guys can probably, maybe. Yeah, see the little 14 right there? So it's got both bolts now. Um, did find some bolts that should work with the couple that's missing in this transmission. But parts car is over there, so we might as well just pull them off of that so we know exactly which ones they are. Um, the hell I get on this? Grease or something or water? New plugs. But yeah, let's put this damn thing in here. It's too windy. Or else I'd just let this on and show you, but it's the same time simple and stupid to video the whole damn thing. Oh, well, there it is. Just remember, that goes that way. Just take your hoses off. Pretty simple job. Might be part of the EVAP problem. It accepts gas, so I know the charcoal part ain't a problem, so. I want to replace this, check the vent out sometime, make sure it's good, do the fuel filter, and if I still have the issue, then I'm really puzzled. Then I would be definitely puzzled, but I'm thinking this could be part of the situation. Let's hope. I figured I'd show you guys, just see they did re-engineer it a little different. Both. Made the same spot. But they redid the everything on it. Same thing, just redid it all. Hopefully for the best. So we'll see. I've never had a problem with these before, but my daily so I like fixing it and eventually I'm thinking about doing this thing it's a lot of money but I may do it sometime and I like to uh, really would like to do an all motors build one of these cars but it would be better to do it in one of these cars because way a lot less and I like to be the first person to get 300 horsepower have an NA Tiburon Never seen one 300 horsepower NA. Preferably, I like to get one about 400 horsepower. It'd be nice to do like a 15 to 1 compression, individual throttle bodies, have it come up at like a, like an H series. Do a throttle body out the hood, swoop the exhaust right out through the hole right there, out the fender, pretty straight line, and uh, beta 2 head all built up, bottom end built and try for some super high compression. That's what I'd love to do sometime, but it's expensive. It'd be a lot easier to do it in a Honda, which is probably what I'll do it in. All right, let's see if it's the starter or if it was just, if there's a wiring issue going on even. Oh, that's nice. I have never had a starter in here that was worth a shit. God, I hate that noise. Can't believe I didn't take this buzzer out of here yet. I'm trying to keep everything in here OEM. Trying to get everything made for, you know, bought for it OEM and everything like that. Um, I gotta go check to see when I gotta change the oil again. I'm pretty sure it's coming up within 100 miles or two. Um, yeah, at least it starts. Well, see if it turns back on, I guess. We got 
got that uh, purge valve changed, so that's good to go. I don't even think I showed that afterwards. All right, I'm gonna run a thinner weight oil in this than I normally run in these, but this is a lot of the rattlings up here. I gotta take this header off. I'm not sure what brand this header was. I've never been able to find it. You gotta get these motor mounts replaced. But there's the new one. So, and uh, I had that crack right there and <laughs> some black Permadex and fixed it. Still need to get a new one for it though. But next thing I wanna do to this is, this timing belt's been replaced, but I don't think that water pump's been replaced in a long time. Timing belt has been, got a new gates on it and the tensioners all look newer on it. I should put the cover back on it. I just like them better without the cover, but when you daily them, you should really have a cover on them. Um, alternator and everything so far has been good. That water pump, I want to get that out of there as soon as I can. Hopefully this car seems to run better now, hopefully. I mean, a lot of new stuff on it. I ain't got to get motor mounts yet. Might have already said that. But keep tapping away out of her until we get all the bugs out of it. You figure this thing's like 21 years old. Um... I'd have to say it's probably had maintenance maybe the first three years of its life. <laughs> so most of all this stuff's 20 plus years old. It's sitting underneath here. But you gotta re keep replacing the stuff till you get it right again. And it'll last you another 20 years. But so far new wires, new plugs, new TPS. All, well, the plugs are not OEM, but that's what they run anyway, OEM. Even, they just say Hyundai written on them. Same way with the plugs, say Hyundai, but they're NGK. But NGK plugs, NGK wires, OEM coil pack, OEM TPS, OEM pressure valve for the small crap, EVAP crap. Um, what else did I do to this thing? Thought we put some more um, stuff on it, but. So far, that's what we replaced that I remember of. Should go ahead and replace the PVC valve. Maybe just run a catch can on it, but no use in that at this point. Um, yeah, sounds pretty good. The more I keep running it, the better it sounds. Just need the motor mounts in it. All right, guys, thanks for watching this boring video, but it's all I was gonna do today, I think. If I do anything else, I'll video it. If not, I'm going to actually relax today. I should be working on the turbo car, but I'm not. Actually, I might do something with that real quick, a little experiment. Not sure if I told you guys this yesterday, but the Accent did have lowering springs on it. No idea what kind, but they were lowering springs. Alright guys, this right here is like 3.8 PSI. This right here is like 14 PSI, I believe. Um, or 10 PS, I think it's 14. But uh, I took it out just to do a quick experiment with this before I get ready to uh, start actually getting to this car finally since we got our DD cars done. Still got to do the waste car yet though, so that may delay this a little bit longer. But I want to figure out this car with E85 can hit four pounds of boost, three and a half pounds of boost on stock heat shield. I'm just curious as fuck, so that's why I bought this spring. All right, as you can see, you can plainly cruise with E85. And if you don't hit boost, you won't go lean. But even with three pounds of boost, she goes lean. So, cannot use I've heard rumors before that you could run these on like five pounds of boost and you know it'll be safe and yada 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 not true at all if you're running E85 NA you can do it but watch super lean guys can't do it so down 
but as soon as you make like a couple pound of boost and once you go up so no way in hell can you run stock ECU with boost not with the 85 and I seriously die with 93 octane either but it might be able to but there goes that experiment. A no-go like I thought.